everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Thank you so much for being a part of this experience. I am going to be doing a 60 minute journey for a client. This is a distance energy healing session, sharing psychic wisdom and energy healing. And this is going to be a fun journey. We're going to learn a lot of different things. We're all going to reap the reward of transformation today through the gift of this client session. So I want to thank you so much to the client for the opportunity to connect with you and to support you. Thank you for sharing with us here on YouTube so we can all feel transformed by your experience. If any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. Okay, so goals are short. We're going to be doing a healing session with Source to heal your left eye. Okay. Hmm. So I'm going to be connecting with Source. And the focus is going to be specifically on your left eye. Okay. I'm going to relax. All right. I'm just opening the door. This is the door to your left eye. This is the door where we can transform the way that you feel your relationship with your left eye, understanding your soul's relationship with the meaning of this situation in your life. You know what this is about? Beneath the surface, beneath the surface, beneath the surface, there's something you're not wanting to look at, okay? You know what's interesting about eyes? I find that my left eye can see into the depths of the dark side of things, and my right eye sees into the depths of the light side of things. And so if I can use both my eyes, I can see a wholeness. And so if you're having vulnerability with your left eye based upon what my experience is, if I was having an issue with my left eye, it would mean that I was having a hard time looking at something um, that was in the darker side or the more uncomfortable side of my um, life process. You know, the right side is more the harmonious side. You know, I just did a zodiac energy reading and I can't remember what zodiac sign. I think it was Ophiuchus, but it was, um, we were at a crossroads and it was the left eye that was conflicted and was having to um, resolve a lot of problems that was having a hard time then just not working with the left eye so we could see what was working with the right eye, the harmony. And we weren't able to look through the right eye at the harmony because we, all we could see was what was what the problem was. I find this so interesting. There's no coincidence, you know. You're wanting me to heal your left eye and my relationship with the meaning of the right and left eyes on just an energy level thing. And even the, the zodiac energy reading for Ophiuchus was related to this too. So there may be a collective thing going on in the way that we're looking at things while it also pertains to literally needing healing for your left eye. So I'm basically in an energy space I represent Source. I'm glowing with golden light. Source and I are working together. I'm walking through the door into your left eye and I can't do it. I'm stuck. I can't do it. The, the feeling is, no, I don't want to see. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to know what's there. It's your energy that's holding yourself back from looking through this door, walking through the door. And then let's take a look at what's going on with your left eye. You following me here? There's no coincidence about a lot of different things that are overlapping here. And it all leads us to this moment with your session. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're going to just start by saying, ah, we're going to like express upset here about left eye. Okay. It needs to be healed. It's not taking us anywhere to do this. So we're going to express that the left eye is healed. Let's see what it does now. This left eye is in the best condition. It sees perfectly. It sees clearly. There's no pain or there's no pressure. There's no um, imbalance. There's no vulnerability here. The energy is full of harmony. 
that actually is helping us to move forward. To say that your left eye is already healed. Your left eye is complete. Your left eye is whole. It's easy because it's easier to say everything's fine than to walk through the door and see what's really there. There is so much major resistance. It's making me curious what your soul knows that we don't know yet. So, believe it or not, it's not easy to heal your left eye. We're only just beginning, but I need to state the obvious. It's going to be difficult to heal your left eye because there's something you don't want to look at in the depths of your soul, and the only way to, to look at it is through your left eye. So your left eye then is shut down so that you won't have to look at it. So now I'm going to have to work on finding out what you can't cope with looking at in order then to heal your left eye. What I'm doing is just, I'm being present with you. I'm being present with you in a space where we're creating relaxation, safety and security. We're winding down the energy. We're not worried about the left eye right now. We're not worried or, or wanting to look at anything exactly. Because right now we're just wanting to have the experience or the sensation of comfort. The color is a brownish orange. All right, continuing to relax this part of yourself. Again, going to look at your left eye. This time I see a big wall there and it's in the shape of an octagon. I'm gonna go be the octagon wall for a moment. I feel like an optom optometrist, op ophthalmologist, optometrist, <laughs> an eye doctor. I'm like, with my, my flashlight, um, keep your eye wide as I, I burn your eyeball out with my flashlight. Like, <laughs> and it's watering down my face. And then the pupils dilating and then not dilating. And we're doing all these strange like liquids and juices in this eyeball. It's under so much pressure. I feel like I'm, I'm one of these doctors that's like tormenting your left eye so that I can gain all this scientific information. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We're finally figuring out what's going on here. We need more tests. <laughs> and I'm, I'm the octagon wall. And your eyes just under so much light, under so much pressure, under so much study. The octagon wall, octagon wall takes me to a desert space, actually. And it's weird because as the snake moves in the desert, it moves in the shape of breath, apparently. So I see a snake moving back and forth very quickly in sand and then I see the inhale and the exhale of, of air so I, I see breath and the snake moves in the shape of breath but it's not creating comfort and the snake is not resolving anything and to look at these patterns is not resolving anything. We're sitting now in an empty room and there's nobody there but you. And there's a spotlight upon you so you glow white and everything else is in the dark. It also represents an eye like a pupil and then the whites of the eye. There's no color here. It's just a, a whites of the eye and then a pupil but it's 
all backward. The light is in the pupil and the whites are where the pupil is. It's all backward. I'm going down the tunnel of what is defined as the pupil and I'm defining it as black and not white. And this makes you nervous. And there's actually a really long corridor and then it jets off to the side and then it curves around. And you don't like this curvature and it takes a very long time to walk the curvature. Almost like you'll never be able to go all the way around it. It would take an infinite amount of time and in infinity where there's no beginning or end. It would just feel like you were walking around a a circular, um, I guess, path forever, never meeting the other side of it, just continue to walk around in a circle and never really feeling like you ever went around it. Maybe like you're just always walking along the side of it forever. I can tell even for me, it's, it's, it's like, I feel like we need a major exhale here because there's so much uh, pressure stored up and there's so much air stored up inside of you and it's collecting over here on your left side. Almost like your head is a balloon and it balloons out on the left side. And I, it's hard for me to breathe even. Again, we're returning to the comfort space. We're not worried about the left eye right now. All we're doing is relaxing and letting go of our relationship with anything and everything, even your identity to yourself. Like every thought, every feeling, every relationship with like um, past, present, future, memory, relationship with oneself, it's, it's all disappearing, disappearing. So that way you can be the center of something that is simplistic. It helps to wind you down into yourself. But this here is becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger issue. I'm telling you on the energy side of it, it is, it is over. It's, it's out of proportion is what it is. It's completely out of proportion. It even feels skittish. It's, it's, it's this, it's that. It's just, it's out of proportion. All right, I'm gonna go back to you while this part of you is still relaxing and winding down and we're gonna go, it's so bulbous, it's blown out of proportion. It's like your left side of your, your whole left side of your face is enormous, okay? And there's so much air stored up in here. Then there's pressure stored up in here and it looks like your liver is stored in here. I just see a big um, heavy organ and it makes me think of the liver. And it's not your brain. It's like your liver is stored in here. And this is making kind of the tip of my ear itch. And it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and blown out. And I see it's, it's, it's just so strange, but it's starting to affect your whole left side. We're going to let it continue to go as far as it wants to go out there. I don't know why you're blowing this out of proportion. I say to your left eye, like, why is this about everything now? This is literally about your whole left part of your body. Like everything on the left side of you is now becoming bloated and under pressure. And I keep seeing the liver, okay? It's like your whole left side is one big liver. It's getting very hot as well. And we're going to have to keep blowing this out of proportion because I'd really like to take a look at the right side. But until this has come full circle on the left side, we just need to keep letting it go and go and go and go and go until it breaks. Okay. Until it can't take it anymore. Until something snaps and things change energetically. Because it was hard to even expose this. Now we're starting to expose this and now it can't stop exposing itself. So it's just going to keep like 
blowing up until it's a big balloon that pops. Because there's no real understanding happening either that are balancing both the left and the right sides. You're getting aggressive. You're um, arguing with yourself and you're putting a lot of negativity back into yourself. There's something strange about your crown chakra. It seems like it's fine, but it, it's saying that it's not fine, okay? I'm not sure what that means yet, but that's what I'm running into. There's something going on with your crown chakra. It appears fine, but actually it's not fine. Appears fine, isn't fine. All right, I'm just, I'm still watching you blow up, but you, you're covered and now, I mean, it's not just one liver, it's like a thousand livers. I'm not sure why the liver, but you're covered in many, many livers now. And you just look like a big old piece of, of stacked liver meat. <laughs> I ask you if you're ready to stop now and if I could please investigate some more. Like I'd say we are investigating. I say without things continuing to grow, can't they stop growing? Because I can't get to the root of this because it's always pushing me to the surface. It doesn't want to go deeper than the surface. It could even create problems in order to avoid what's deeper than the surface. I feel like it could create problems that aren't real, but they're convenient problems because then again, it, it, it's avoiding what's beneath the surface. It's avoiding the root of what this is actually all about. It could be about a million things before it's about the one thing that this is actually about. And I'm going to run into anything and everything that's going to be a diversion from what we're really working on. So I got to keep clearing out this insecurity, the diversion. And I will say there's still meaning to what is coming out. I'm not going to say that the liver isn't a part of this, but it is a bit peculiar. And I don't know how to translate that meaning other than it just keeps appearing here and here. But as I talk about it, it, it does feel a little more deflated, like it's been venting and now it's calming down. You look like a, a morphed human face. You look like a, what would be defined as a freak of a human being, like you were born with one jacked up face, okay? And it's supposed to be a bit aggressive when I say that. And it's almost like I'm supposed to be angry with you for being born wrong. And I, I'm supposed to say it like that. Like I'm supposed to be degrading of you. I'm supposed to be degrading of your face. <sighs> I'm supposed to be degrading like y y I am mad at you for being born with a jacked up face. You offend me. <laughs> now that's, that's the next um, experience. That's the next energy. That's how we're meant to look through this. I keep feeling like I'm somebody who hates you and for being born wrong. And I blame you for the way you were born. I blame you for being screwed up. But when I try to be the part of you that is the screwed up one, the one who's um, receiving this negativity, I can't seem to participate as you. The one who's worthy and deserving of this treatment and behavior. Again, the eye swells and then it blows up on the inside. Now it's shutting down and it can't see through it. It cannot see through this. So then it just stops functioning. But I feel like, it again, it's a switch. So if we could avoid the emotional process, maybe we could blow up the physical process and then, and then we don't have to deal with it anymore. 
It's something that is very hard for you at the soul level to look through the lens of your left eye, which it's very hard for you to look at something of a con conflicting nature. And it's very specific. So again, I'm going to try to bring you into this, but my guides are asking me to go to the part of you that is in a comfort space, a space of comforting before we go to the next step here. I will tell you, you nailed it. You needed energy work for your left eye, probably more than you would have thought. <laughs> this isn't just some physical um, condition. There's a lot of information here. There's a lot of avoidance. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of layers of meaning. All right, I'm, we're in the space of comfort. Again, letting go of our relationship with the left eye, relationship with problems, a relationship with, I need to heal this because this isn't working. So we need to mend it and make it work or make it better. We're just letting go of that um, evaluation. We're going to let go of relationship with identity, relationship with past, present, future, relationship with everything that conceivably makes us have an existence. We're just going to just, I guess you could just say, just be an ember of being without holding any responsibility to ourself or to anything beyond ourself because we're just an ember of being, like a, a fabric of, of existence, but we're not really having to even take on the responsibility of existing. It's hard to put it into language, but it's creating simplicity like simplicity upon simplicity upon simplicity upon simplicity upon simplicity, okay? And the more depth and the more time that we create simplicity for you, the easier it's going to get to work on this, okay, left eye thing. So we've got that going on over here, wherever that is. It's just a separate space connected to what we're working on here with your left eye. All right, I'm going to try and get you to look through your left eye now. We're going to look at this uh, abusive uh, personality that you offend me. How dare you be born all jacked up like this? How dare you? You're offending my life. You're offending me by being born all messed up. So you got to look through at this person's face or the spirit of this person. You got to look through and actually look into this person it's really hard to look into this person there's something of their energy that becomes so bright it's blinding your eye it's actually burning out your eye like it's a light bulb that just went pop and it burnt your eye completely out interesting because their negativity is so bright it burnt out your eyeball can negativity be bright light too yes it can you can find demonic beings that glow with white light. And this is a negative energy. This is a defiling energy. This is a devaluing of you energy. This is I hate you for being born energy. It's demonic because it's broken. It's not um, at peace. It's in conflict. It's in chaos. Why would you let your eye be blown out by being that's so insecure? By an energy that is so ridiculously insecure, is lost in chaos. Why would you let that happen to you? Why would you let them affect you? You see now, the eyeball goes pop and it bursts like a watermelon. Just got shot with a shotgun. It's just like, like it just blew up like a bomb was inside. But it's an eyeball and it's going to pop in every direction. There's still a lot going on here. I mean, we're making progress because this isn't blowing out of proportion. You're not covered in layers of, of livers. You're, um, but this is kind of fuzzy feeling. It's got like a fuzzy vibration to it. 
and this is a fuzzy feeling vibration to your left eye area. I also see a scene where you have no left eye and it's literally just um, eyelids and we're opening the eyelids to just flesh and it's very strange looking. I'm going to see you as somebody who has no left eye for a moment. This is making my ear hot. It's making my cheek hot. It's bringing energy and circulating it around my left side of my face. But you know, it's getting more relaxed again. It's getting to another layer of feeling relaxed. I can actually go back to the you that's in the comfort space. I can even bring this you from the comfort space into the relaxed part of your left eye now. I can merge these two worlds together. You don't feel overwhelmed or afraid anymore. You don't feel like you're up against something that you can't look at, okay? This is major progress. I show you how the left eye is unique. So we're going to look at just on a spirit level thing, okay? So I'm just showing you that I, I'm showing you a world that... Um, is basically a world where the lights are turned off, okay? So I show you this world in my left eye, and then I show you the same world with my right eye, and we're gonna see it with the lights turned on. And we're gonna look through the lens of a dark place and a place of light. We could look through the lens of chaos or love. We look, look through the lens of one side or another side, okay? And so we can use our left eye to see it in this way and our right eye to see it in this way. And both ways are good ways. Both ways are good. And I ask you if you could look at this dark scene, we'll just call it a space, neutral, where the lights are just turned off, that's it. And I want you to look at this space with your left eye. Oh, it's burning. That it's not, you can see the darkness, but it's actually burning your the flesh of your eyeball. Okay. I want you to keep looking at it. And let's not try to avoid the pain, but let's just feel the pain. Let's just feel the pain. <sighs> Starting to subside. Now it feels like neutral. I'm not allowed to show you or for us to look at it from the right side, but only through the left side. And I'm helping to create light and color. Comfort, it's easy, it's simple. Light and color. You remember what light and color looks like. Through the lens of this dark we see light and color. Right now it just looks like light, but it doesn't hurt and it's not real. Like it comes from the sun or it comes from a, a light bulb. It's actually the imagination of light. It's like imagining light, but we're not bringing in any other colors. We're just bringing in light. That feels a lot better actually. Feels a lot better. I will say a lot of this blown out of proportion is almost you you're almost like an, a normal person on both sides um, I it's not um, bloated out or anything you feel like normal on both sides okay I don't feel that abusive voice um, how dare you be born all jacked up like you're the problem you were born this way you're a problem like that voice has disappeared Okay, you're doing really good. I show you, we're gonna go dark. Okay, good, and light. Okay, good, dark. Seeing dark, good. Hold that. Seeing dark, hold that. That's good, seeing light. 
hold that. Good, good. All right, we're going to try on both sides. We're going to have an, have both sides. So right will also see dark with right alongside left, okay? We're just the lights are turned off and we're going to let both eyes see dark now. Right eye sees dark, left eye sees dark. Right eye sees dark, left eye sees dark. Both of them are on the same page. We're going to look through and see both eyes open at the same time. We're going to see dark. Very good. Okay, right. See light. <laughs> yes. So easy to see light on this side. See light. <laughs> yeah. Okay, see dark. Yes. Okay, see dark on both sides. See light on both sides. The, the, the right is um, showing the left more of what the light looks like. And the left then is remembering both the dark and the light. And the right appreciates the left for showing it the dark. But it se still seems like the left is still trying to build a confidence in what it sees. And the right is happy to be participating now. We're going to adopt the color pink and we're going to have both eyes see pink. This is really easy, really easy to see pink, really easy. I'm just saying yellow, blue, green, like it's really easy here to just name a color. I see it here really easily. This is like um, resistance, but it's getting better. It's already made a major improvement. Let's see pink. Okay, that's better. Let's see red. Um, it's just like red is, um, it doesn't like the color red. Let's just, let's try green for a moment. It really doesn't, it's starting to get irritated. It, it's getting pissed off. Pink, for some reason, did not piss this left side off. But red um, is making it angry. Green even bothers it. It's like all these colors. Yellow, is yellow okay? Yellow actually is okay. How, how interesting. Yellow and pink seem to be okay. Mm, let's try blue. Like a light blue. It's irritated by light blue. How about dark blue? It's like black. Feels like dark blue is lying to it. It's um, holding a grudge as well. Dark blue is. Okay, so dark blue is a person. The person that holds a grudge. I start to see this left eye is starting to um, leak with juice. It's just like starting to leak as it continues to look at dark blue. And there's a lot of anger inside of it. And I say, okay, pull your energy from pushing it out your eyeball and let's hold it inside the eye for a moment. Hold it in here. I want you to swallow it down now. Swallow it into your face. We're going to swallow that energy into your face. You can't do it. You're too angry. Okay. Do you need to be angry right now? Do you need to show dark blue something? You need to teach it a lesson? You need to kill it? Yes, you, you need to put red, um, you need to push basically red into dark blue. And red is like um, slicing dark blue into pieces. And that gives you relief when that happens. I say, okay, this is definitely something we, <laughs> we need to figure this out. Okay, let's try, let's try red over here on the right side. Let's just try red over here on the right side. Right side's fine with it. Okay, dark blue. Let's see. Right side also doesn't like dark blue. Like it's a person that they just don't, they despise this person. They distrust this person. But right is quite lighthearted, actually. And just doesn't want to go there with it. Just lets it go. But left doesn't, just left is very conflicted about this. So, okay. 
So I show the right what the left decided to do in order to reconcile the energy. It's a push red through dark blue and cut it to pieces. We're not going to judge that decision. We're just going to try to work through it. What do you think about that right side? Right side tries to mimic it. it says it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. I say right side. What do you feel like the left side should do differently? The right side says, I, I feel that your personality should go and hug the dark blue. And even says, I will go and hug the dark blue as well. <laughs> We're working on relationships with colors. It's cool. Okay, let's see. Right side is hugging dark blue and saying, I'm sorry for being so angry at you. Dark blue is really standoffish. Like, <laughs> like can't really say anything, but makes all these weird noises. Dark blue doesn't want to accept, does want to stay in a place of negativity. Only proves to the right side that there was always a reason to dislike dark blue. The left side wants to be more aggressive, wants to actually slap dark blue in the face, wants to punch dark blue and then kick it while it's down, wants to smash its head in, like really is aggressive here but is going to try to take the approach of the right side, which is just simply to go and talk to dark blue and say, I just struggle with our relationship here. This, this eye is filling up quite quickly and it's popping again. It's starting to just drip. It's there's juice going everywhere. Okay. Okay, there was a comfort with the color yellow. So as it's leaking, we're putting yellow into the left eye. And the left eye starts to cry and says, when will this torture? When will this nightmare be over? So what I do is I, I feel like I'm returning to the octagon wall and the desert with the, with the snake in the breath. And... I feel like I'm going to a wall now that's dark blue, but I'm an octic I'm like a white octagon and I also am a desert with a snake that represents breath. And we're going to face each other. But the dark blue seems to be like a really massive white door and I'm just walking through also this wide dark blue landscape which is a door. And it's actually consuming me, it's eating me. It's actually eating me. It's eating my body. It's eating my face. It's like a cannibal. It's eating me and I'm alive and I'm being eaten alive. This is worse than mosquitoes. <laughs> this is like somebody with a little pocket knife cutting off pieces of you and then putting it in the, I don't know, pot over the fire or something, making a soup. And this is just you slowly being eaten alive for the next couple weeks. And just piece by piece by piece is being eaten by this person. It's cruelty. It's the worst kind of cruelty. Somehow you looking at that story and you seeing yourself as part of it is healing for your soul. It's healing for something that you couldn't see eye to eye with. You couldn't even wrap your head around it. There was no sense in it. There was nothing um, acceptable about it. Everything was wrong about it. And now I see your right and left sides are switching places. Your left is now on your right and your right is now on your left. And this is releasing major pressure here. And now your crown chakra feels like it's, there's a volcanic eruption and this jam is just releasing out of your crown chakra. And what it looks good, it also feels a lot better. It feels better with the flow, okay? Now that your right is on the left and the left is on the right, it feels like you're able to see both sides and you're able to see clearly. <clears throat> and this dark blue is a person, it really is. It also represents somebody you're familiar with who actually did quite terrible things to you in another life or other lives. And it feels like you were kind of tied and forced to endure what they were dishing out. And it was part of you to explore what you believed was right or wrong or good or bad. 
and to build a relationship with his soul based on a relationship of being terrorized by this soul. And it's weird because there's complex relationships and love going on here. Imagine somebody gets you and starts to cut you to pieces and then eat you in front of yourself looking at this. Like, that is not love. But if you have the caliber, you can understand the infinite universe and soul relationships over time challenge each other. Challenge each other's thinking, logic, right, wrong, good, bad, acceptability. Like the, and then the tolerance, the intolerance. The, the the downright wrongness of it, the defilement, the needing for, for a karmic lesson here, for them to endure suffering, for them to be exposed to themselves, anger, frustration, like insanity, like all of this stuff is opening the souls up to an expansion of oneself, one's identity. Souls become more dimensional. Through these incomprehensible experiences and what they've seen. I feel that dark blue represents somebody you cannot trust, but you want, it's almost like you would want to believe that they were good, but they are not good. And they've shown you that they are not good, but you still want to believe that they are good deep down inside. It's almost like you intertwine with the soul to show the soul the goodness inside of itself, but it refuses. When it comes to you, it's almost like it wants to torture you. Then when it comes to, to you towards them, you want to show them the goodness inside themselves. But every time they cross paths with you, they just want to torture you. They refuse to adopt your vision of them, your sight of them, how you see the goodness in them, they refuse to adopt it when they're around you. You're challenging the soul. You love this soul enough to endure this soul. Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> you do see. Because now the eyes are functioning better. And you are looking at this and the aggression that you have towards dark blue is disappearing. But you still are kind of disappointed and sad. And my guides show me that if you and this dark blue, this soul, um, if you chose to not cross paths, that dark blue would, would experience lifetimes of severe loneliness and life without breath because there would be no soul there to exchange the life force energy which is breath, which is love, which is experience, which is meaning. Even if the meaning is cruel, even if the meaning is downright wrong on 10,000 levels, it creates meaning, okay? So if you have the courage to not have an exchange with this soul, this soul will endure lifetimes of severe loneliness and would then long for your soul and then have finally gratitude for your soul. Otherwise, you just, it's like you're getting under the skin of this soul and it just wants to take its aggression out on you, but really you, you're both at fault here and you need to leave this soul alone Sorry, you're the one that has to leave the soul alone because you're as attracted to this soul as the soul is attracted to you. And then you walk away and this soul now endures loneliness. But then what do you endure? It's weird. You actually, self-love is what you endure. You endure self-love. And self-love is our safe space without calling it a safe space, it's peace. And it, it brings comfort and relief to both eyes, the right now on the left, the left now on the right. And I feel harmony and balance because right and left and left and right uh, are actually um, working together as balanced twins, as lovers, in fact, as soulmates. 
um, and the pressure is released. There's relief here. And I even see the right and left sides are communicating better, okay? Again, we're going to bring more energy draining out of what is like now the face and the head where it went up through the crown. We There's energy that must drain here and it's coming down the right and left sides, both the same. And it's going down the body and out the feet. This left, um, this is a huge improvement already. I already feel... Even that alone is moving energy in a breathable way. <sighs> Maybe that's why the liver kept showing up because it was trying to transmute emotional, um, an emotional side to this um, imbalance. Still letting this drain, okay? I, I see on the left side, which is right and left now, at the same time, the left is made up of the right too. But it's here on the left side. It is blinded by a light, okay? So let's just look at the light without resistance. We're going to look into the light. It feels like the light is going to um, destroy our eyesight. This light is actually going to... I see Pac-Man eating like breadcrumbs or whatever. Um, and it, I see that the light is eating away at your ability to see. And it's getting spotty. It's getting like I'm seeing colors or I'm seeing spots. But it's like eating away at your ability to see. And it's like major light sensitivity to the max kind of experience here. gross I just I don't know what this squishy thing is but I just it just I there's a squishy thing that started to have a leg and I just took it and I pulled it out it's just like a gross squishy little mini gremlin thing it just <laughs> it's very gross it represents energetically it is gross <laughs> I just pulled gross out of your eye Still refusing to look at something here. It's too hard to look at. They say we've made progress. We don't even need the safe room. Right and left sides are wanting to work together. There's still um, energy that's choosing to create separation between right and left sides. Um, that we need to focus on the left separate from the right. So it's creating a de definite distinction here. Come on now, look through the light. Look through. You guys are taking us to a room we're going to look in that's full of light. And it's going to be hard to see because it's going to be too bright. It's just like when things are too dark, it's hard to see too. But this light is hurting our eye. So I take the pain from this left eye and we're going to balance it with the right eye. So both the right and left sides are going to be looking through the light. I say this is not hard and you know what is there. So stop leaning into I'm blind and I can't see. No, you actually see just fine. So stop saying that you can't see. It's convenient to say that you can see. It's green. And green is disappoint is about disappointment. You're really disappointed in green. Green let let you down big time. Green was supposed to be your friend. Then green let you down. 
green is the worst kind of friend because it's the kind of friend that should have been there that wasn't and green let you down and it's worse than that it's almost like uh, not it, it's a real heartbreaker all right so green is here so you aren't blinded you just didn't want to look at green did you and we need to look at green and we need to look at how green let you down and we need to look at disappointment and now you're getting mad at the right eye and you blame the right eye for all your problems in the left eye like you you're starting to put blame games on here I say you sound like that voice that was putting down your deformity how dare you be born deformed it's like the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard and now you're like blaming right eye for your problems it's like very ludicrous you need to take responsibility for your own problems and you need to let red, the, the right side help you which is interesting because I called it red let's just say that you need to let the red help you just see what happens I don't know why but I, I find that that's helpful because left is starting to emulate being green and right is starting to emulate being red and the green now is absorbing into your left eye and I just see an eyeball here but the right's having a hard time absorbing the red in and what we're going to do is the red it just starts to disappear because we're going to um, bring we're going to share green with the right side and now the right and left sides glow the same color of green and they then are green they aren't looking at green or looking through green they are green now they're both green and they're both looking at red as a red is out there now this is far more tolerable but red is as bad as a white light just spotlight blinding your eyeballs out it's red appears to be as um, overwhelmingly bright as bright white light and so we're going to look at red here and let's see what we're supposed to do about this livers are starting to appear on your skin and it's actually starting to appear on both the right and left sides they're just miniatures they're not enormous chunks like liver chunks they're huge these are small and they're just appearing everywhere like i mean they are appearing everywhere all over your body even on your legs So as we look at red your eyes are glowing green and you're starting to develop this liver thing all over your body what's your relationship with red red is about communication and it's disappointment now in yourself for not saying what you needed to say and when you look at red it makes you feel let down by yourself even like you can't count on yourself that's that's unique that you can't count on you to speak when you need to speak or to say the right thing when you need to say the right thing you can't count on yourself you will be a letdown then to yourself <sighs> oh man this is really doing some crazy stuff between your right and left sides and your ears and your equilibrium you're starting to feel dizzy in your head and again i feel this is impacting third eye but i also feel it impacting crown and it feels like your head is way higher than your actual body's position and it feels like you're very far away from earth and it's kind of dizzying actually because as you're 
bringing the sight back to yourself and you're bringing real true sight back to yourself and you're bringing harmony and balance back to yourself and you're looking at things that were hard to look at, it's um, revealing more. <laughs> it always does. It always reveals more. But this is getting you yet the next edge when it comes to balance with your body and it seems like past, present, and future. I'm bringing your head to your neck and bring your head to your body. That's very dizzying. There's a huge gap here in space. You feel tired. You feel like you need to sleep. We're going to take a look at dark blue. Let's see what your relationship is with dark blue. Nothing. All right, let's see what your relationship with, is with green here. Nothing. Okay. How about red? Red still is pissing you off. It's still bothering you. So let's turn your eyes red here for a minute and you're going to look at red with red eyes. Let's just see what happens. You say that you're for, it's about self-love. You need to, it's once you adopt red, then you must adopt the ability to love yourself genuinely. And if you refuse to love yourself, then you will have a very hard time facing red. You're so angry and you're so disappointed in yourself. You, you always screw up or you, it's like really saying something that's a bit obtuse, you know, you always screw up. You always say the wrong thing. You always talk at the wrong time or you never speak up when the time is right. You're a failure. You're the worst. I can never count on you to do the right thing and you're just yelling at yourself here, calling yourself a failure in conflict with yourself here. And you're just like, way, it's like, you always do this. Always do this. Always, 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 always. So we need to just know, we're taking out the word always. And I say, I, why, why not? Why not decide that you, you you said nothing, because there was nothing to say. Even if you felt like you needed to say something, and you chose to say nothing, that's because you were meant to say nothing. It's like giving you the ability. It's giving you room to just be yourself. Speak when you're ready to speak. Say nothing when you feel like. All you can do at this time is say nothing. And then don't hold a grudge against yourself. You can't be a hero every single day. It's exhausting. <laughs> and if you couldn't do it today, that doesn't mean you can't do it in the future. It just don't, like, hold yourself. Don't imprison yourself through this. Don't destroy yourself through this. Evaluation of what the worst person in the world that you are because you couldn't speak when you needed to speak, like you failed yourself. You're starting to glow with red and green and dark blue properly and in balance here, which is actually making black and white not, not bad at all, like they look like just normal lenses of light and dark normal lenses of light and dark and that's actually um, transmuting again any imbalances in the relationship between your right and left side i see um again the disappearance of liver the liver on your skin i feel like you your next step is to love yourself Completely. And if there was someone in your life that wasn't able to love you yet, um, let them go. Because what's going to mend your soul's connection is actually, unfortunately, when you turn your back, they will endure loneliness, which is their next lesson, to then be able to embrace you the way you know that you can be embraced by them. But then you're actually choosing self-love for yourself, which is something you should be proud of. 
And it's bringing harmony to your heart and to your soul. Do you see? You feel so much better here. And I know you're asking for the left side, but when we work through the left side, it's actually we're starting to get a, an alignment and a balance between right and left, which is then harmonizing, balancing your whole body, your whole aura, everything, and how you see the world outside of you and how you see inside yourself. so much better so much more balanced <laughs> thank you so much for this experience you never know what you're gonna get i will say that was not easy to get into for starters <laughs> it's like you want this but you don't want this <laughs> you're a lot more open to this now that was major progress i have a i could imagine that you would feel oddly like lighter in your forehead above your head your whole head region might even feel like 20 pounds just lifted and it's going to disperse in the weight of your energy field and you're going to feel way more breathable and cleaner and you might even feel quite full of laughter even and lightheartedness because you've reconciled these color relationships which is creating an ease on your way of perceiving things. This could be a lot more complex than we know. So we just use these simple ways of looking at things, but it actually helps to go deep into the root of what this is about, which then creates the breath and the snake is going right and left in the sand and everything seems to be in the balance. <laughs> Interesting. All right, thank you. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you all have a really wonderful day.